Good afternoon, friends. You are listening to Full Toss on Radio Dil online, Radio Dil dot com for iPhone downloads application known as. Uh, if you have our own application, Radio Dil, you can also listen to us on your regular phones. Dial in the number four zero eight four one eight five thousand. Once again, that is four zero eight four one eight five thousand for Android phones. Application known as Tune Radio. Phone number in the studio is seven three two. Eight hundred one zero zero eight. Once again, that is seven three two eight hundred one zero zero eight. Option number radio dil dil se dil tak. October thirteen two thousand and twelve. Time in the studio is two o four. This is your host Amit. Would like to welcome all the listeners and above all, a big, 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 big welcome to my friends, my colleagues. But above all, we have one of the most legendary wicket keepers India has ever produced, Padma Shri. Mr. Syed Kirmani, sir, welcome to our show. Yeah, thanks very much indeed, and uh, good afternoon or good evening to all those uh, listeners uh, who are listening to my voice. And also at this point, let me also welcome uh, our full toss crew, Amanat and Vijay. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you very much, Amit. It's wonderful being here. Uh, thank you, Amit, and uh, it's an honor to be sharing the mic and the same room as Mr. Syed Kirmani. And now I know another individual who is here, not new to this uh, the circuit, not new to this format, a very good friend of uh, Full Toss, president of Edison Cricket Club, Atul Hoku. It's always a pleasure being here with everyone, and it's great to uh, talk. I think it's a fantastic, fantastic energy in the room here right now. After a long time, after a long time, and both Vijay and Amanath can agree with me on this. And Atul has been part of the show for many, many, many years. Here's I have somebody who is sitting in front of me who I've idolized my entire life. Yes, I have. I've and taken wicket keeping, and I just cannot believe that I'm sitting across yes, my and, hero. And he looks good enough to wicket keep for India even today. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Dhoni is uh, getting uh, you know uh, very tired by, by keeping in all three formats. So Kirmani is here. <laughs> you no, know, that's the feeling of others who think that Dhoni is getting tired of uh, all the three formats. No, 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 no. no. Uh, in fact, it's a great uh, pleasure to be associated with uh, Radio Dil and all you gentlemen out here who are great um, um, fanatics of cricket, I must say, and who have uh, some uh, fantastic memories. Yeah, definitely. Uh, 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 Mr. Kermani, it's really such an honor and a privilege to be uh, hosting this show with you. And I, I'm sure our listeners would uh, be very keen to hear what you have to say about various events of, uh, of the past and the present and in the future too. Yes, and we have uh, grown up idolizing and listening to radio commentary when you know even before all this boom of 2020 and even one day cricket when test matches reigned supreme and we would uh, listen to BBC radio when uh, India is using playing test matches in England. Those are the days. Those are the memories. And you know, and uh, thanks to uh, great cricketers like Kirmani, yep. we have been uh, you know really uh, spoiled with the really great cricketers. Well, I didn't realize that uh, you guys uh, are um, living uh, encyclopedia on cricket. You all shocked me, particularly Amarnath, with his uh, memory. Of course, uh, for sure, uh, you are, he has a better memory. Uh, obviously, with obvious reason that he has got more hair than my hair. <laughs> 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 As usual, you can't beat. Uh, Amarath, I must stop you here. That not many things stick on my shining and slippery head. You see, that's the reason why I said you have a better memory. <laughs> But at the same time, looks like uh, it is as uh, difficult to find uh, excellent keepers these days as it is uh, hair on your head, sir. <laughs> uh, well, you will never find them uh, at all unless and until you get uh, a Chandrasekhar, a Prasanna, and a Bedi. Well, Radio Dil, you live on your name, and where are you calling from? Well, I think we just lost that listener. You can always give us a call here at seven three two eight hundred one zero zero. I think you dropped it. You're yeah, I dropped like, it. Right? Like, a, like an inefficient <laughs> wicket keeper of today. <laughs> okay, gentlemen, this is what I have planned for today. This is exactly this is what we will do. We cannot miss this opportunity. We have one of the greatest wicket keepers India has ever produced. So we'll definitely be having chat with Mr. Kermani on this one. I want both of your input as well. We have a, a lot of news. I know the, uh, the the Championship League has started already. Here's a quick look at the scorecard. The match that is going on right now between Knight Riders and Delhi Co- Daredevils. Kolkata Co- Knight Riders. Yes. And here's a quick look at the scorecard. Those of you who missed this match, 
completely. Delhi Daredevils batting first scored a very good total 160 in 20 overs after losing uh, 8 wickets. 21 for Jai Vardhane, 22 for Sevak. Peterson, 14. By the way, Peterson is back and there's a yes. lot of things that are happening. Mm-hmm. And, and Unmuk Chand scoring. Unmuk Chand, he's an under-19 he is captain. He's upcoming star, uh, the under-19 India captain. And I'm going to go back to Mr. Kermani on this one. I'm going to, as soon as I read yes. the scorecard, I have, I have some questions for go Mr. Ahead. Kermani on this go one. Ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Unmuk Chand, 40. A good score. A very, he's played, played superbly. Ross Taylor, 36. Helped Daredevils get to a total of 160 after losing 8 wickets in 20 overs. Here comes Kolkata Knight Riders. What happened here, Vijay? They are already a 43 for loss of 4 wickets in 10 overs. So 1 for Bisla, 0 for Gambhir, 0 for McCallum. Jack Callis, 0. Retired hurt. Manoj Tiwari, who's batting right now and giving him company, is Rajat Bhatia. We talked about Bhatia many times yes. on our show. And even Yusuf Pathan is gone. Yusuf Pathan is out. He was bowled by Yadav at the score of 11. So I think Knight Riders are pretty much on target here. Uh, I know, Amanath, you have your analysis, your run chase index. Hmm. It's pretty much useless for me to ask you at this point. It's, it's, it's crystal clear exactly how things are shaping. You're already in the 10th over, 11th over as a matter of fact. 11th over, 43 for 4. Kolkata Knight Riders, I would say their probability of uh, reaching 160 is less than 20%, if not uh, lower than that. And mm-hmm. two big guns uh, going out for zero, Gambhir and uh, Jack is both uh, you know experienced cricketers who are senior batsmen for their team uh, both gone for zero so they're really in trouble now coming back to Mr. Kirmani uh, Mr. Kirmani made his test debut versus New Zealand in 1975-76 and over the years he has not only kept for the one of the best win quarters in the world he's also kept for the spearhead the, the uh, pace spearhead headed by uh, Mr. Kapil Dev himself he has seen the spectrum he has been the chairman of the selection committee in 2000 and under his uh, selection, com- under his uh, command, India actually won that series in Pakistan. Vijay, we were, in fact, we started the show that time. Yes. You remember that? Yes, 2004. That He's been that. involved in the domestic front. He has seen much more talent go- coming every day on a daily basis. Mr. Kirmani, my question to you, one of the players, under-19 players, Unmuk Chand is playing at this point. Uh, in terms of your experience, whatever you have seen until now, uh, what are your thoughts about Unmuk Chand and other players? Like uh, we talked about Harmit Singh. Yes, and let me just add one uh, other question there. There have been two schools of thought. One, uh, like Yan Chappell and others, uh, thinking that p- p- players like Unmuk Chand and Harmit Singh should be pushed to the national team right away. Because I, they I are, defer to they that. They are good enough. I defer to that. Yes, and so let's uh, hear what... Uh, That's what I wanted to ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody has his own opinion. Everybody has his own viewpoint. Uh, as far as I am concerned, that these youngsters, Unmuk Chand and Harmit, uh, they are just very recently... Uh, into the limelight uh, under 19 players for India who have performed exceedingly well and have shown a lot of promise and talent within themselves. It is to be seen how consistent they are going to be in the um, domestic uh, circuit and in the higher standards of the game. You cannot straight away uh, put them into the and I, I must ask you gentlemen when you say that these guys should be inducted into the Indian team and in whose place would you put them in? Oh, that's a wonderful question. I did. So, on those basis, uh, you got to groom a guy first. Like, um, for instance, now the competition has been so much in our country and throughout the talent is in abundance in uh, globally, if you ask me. Correct. But you got to groom a guy before you induct him into the international arena. Because it's totally a different um, scenario from under-19 age, uh, under-19 standard of cricket to international uh, highest level of cricket. So, on those basis, you got to see their temperament, how they improve upon. You see, it's not every day or every year that a Sachin Tendulkar is born. That is absolutely right. But at the same time, would you agree that uh, some, uh, you know, in the when the experts see some of these cricketers and they see them not just you know uh, taking a lot of wickets or scoring a lot of runs but the manner in which they do that the circumstances the the game situations how they performed under pressure so looking at all those uh, aspects of their game Vijay I have a slightly different approach to this I, I agree with exactly what you're saying right now Now I, I also witnessed the recently concluded Ir- Irani Trophy and the Airtel Challengers Trophy and I saw Harmit Singh ball there I saw all these other other players uh, who uh, Sandeep Shah Sharma. Mm. I saw Sandeep Sharma ball and my feeling was initially that I think these players should definitely get a, a much more A-class matches under their belt they should get more exposure playing and I mean uh, Iranian very... trophy you had uh, Umesh Yadav you had you know players uh, some senior players who are playing also I think playing uh, amongst them it gives them much more exposure 
I don't want them to hurry up, you know, hurry into the into the uh, you know uh, Indian team and you know start having expectations. Absolutely, it's not for everybody. It's only for the special talent, and you know, of course, uh, the, that's where the experience of uh, people like Mr. Kirmani will uh, yes. help us. That's the reason why I asked him that question. Where he sees the real talent and what he thinks, when when does. A cricketer, you think, is ready for the national team? As you said, not everybody is going to be Tendulkar. That they will be successful right away at the age of sixteen, seventeen, and they uh, they are not uh, you know prodigious talents like that. So, so I feel that this is where it is very very important for the uh, board of control or the selection mm-hmm. committee, junior as well as the senior, put together. They got to look into uh, the graph. You got to graduate yourself. You cannot be like I mentioned earlier that everybody cannot be a Sachin Tendulkar to be playing for the country at the age of 16 right these guys have already cross, uh, crossed 16 and they are um, on to the 20th year uh, in their um, in their life so on those basis their performance have to be seen into the domestic cricket into the Ranji trophy into the Dilip trophy into the Irani trophy so these are the gradations so when you see them performing with consistency into the domestic circuit and then when they excel then automatically they'll find a place and if they are lucky if somebody is not performing from the Indian team right now like uh, experienced players or um, whoever and then uh, automatically if they are in good form they'll be inducted so that's the way the procedure should be uh, to induct any player like for instance when they um, uh, at the time of uh, Parthi Patel the wicketkeeper he came back from under 19 and immediately was inducted into the Indian team and he lost his ground he didn't know where and how to look uh, after himself and it took uh, quite a few years now he's struggling to come back now, Mr. Kirmani, I'm going to direct my attention right towards you. Okay. You were understudy to Mr. Farooq Engineer. Yep. You made your debut in the 1975-76. Now, both of these gentlemen in front of me, they are encyclopedia when it comes to scorecards. <laughs> so, I'm going, to ta- I'm going to take these gentlemen and you mm-hmm. to a series where you took 17 catches and had two stumpings against Pakistan. Also, your innings against Australia and Mumbai where you came as a night, night watchman and you scored that brilliant 101. Yeah. Let's talk about these two innings. Okay. So now, um, uh, where do you want me to start with? Uh, I want you to start first with, with the uh, innings at Bombay when you scored 101 when you came as a night watchman. Well, I time. think um, the listeners will definitely enjoy this. Uh, when uh, the chairman selection committee, Raj Singh Dungarpur, uh, late now, um, he said, uh, Kiri pad up. Hmm. When there were um, four wickets, we were down. And then, uh, you know, and the, at the end of the day, there were about half an hour to go before the close of play. They didn't want to lose another recognized batsman. He said, Paravan, that was my comeback. Yes. 1979, when I was dropped from the Indian team. Correct. Uh, like a hot brick, I was dropped uh, for the entire series, World Cup as well as the series in England. So on the on those basis, I knew my strength. And I was uh, definitely, uh, I made a comeback into the Indian team and that was my first match in the comeback uh, series so Raj Singh uh, Dungarpur said Ke Kiri you pair up go as a night watchman and this is your do or die, do or die match really uh, right on this my is right face. after you come back uh, yeah, and that too I am staging a comeback Okay, this is your do or die match can you imagine when I am staging a comeback Absolutely. into the Indian team and going as a night watchman <laughs> and the chairman selection committee tells me do or die well, whatever uh, do or die, whatever situations I have uh, faced, I think it's my, uh, I've been blessed with a system to take everything into my stride. And such things, such comments uh, um, put on to me brings the best out of me. I take it as a challenge. Okay, you say do or die. I'll do my best whatever comes by. So with that intention, I have always walked in into any pressure uh, time, any uh, this thing. And I have um, put my best foot forward and I have always felt that I must keep my Indian flag flying high. Wonderful. Vijay Amanath, uh, I know you have plenty to add to that. No, it, it was one of the most remarkable innings. Yes. Uh, somebody said, this night watchman uh, continued uh, uh, doing guard duty in the morning as well. <laughs> <laughs> he is one of the l- longest night watchmen. Well, I had definitely taken that lantern, which uh, in our olden days, where uh, the night watchmen used to carry a lantern, you know, with a with a like gasoline uh, <laughs> <laughs> stick into it, like. And so, on those basis, I think uh, it was a wonderful uh, comeback. So, what myself. happened after you scored that century? And that's tell, it, me, that's, tell me what that, happened. That's how that. I established myself. It was um, uh, well. Every I was the first night watchman uh, yes. in the cricketing scenario to have scored a hundred. And uh, yes. I think. 
when you came back, you came back after uh, uh, you lost the place to Bharat Reddy uh, early in the earlier tour, seventy nine. Yeah, that's right. That's mm. uh, that's where you know they wanted to project Bharat Reddy uh, um, at that stage, uh, and uh, I was dropped like a hot brick, like I said. And you, you came know, back with a bang. Uh, mm. Obviously, I knew my strength. I knew that I would definitely come back. And the other century, which I remember of yours, was when you and Shastri had a two hundred thirty. Yes, I have that. Two hundred thirty-five run yes. partnership. That was so both your centuries movie. were match-winning efforts. I just want to let everybody know that. Yes, uh, that absolutely hard, right. That hard brick became the key brick <laughs> in the foundation for the Indian. Well, revival. I must I must let you know when the brick, the topic on the brick has come in. Uh, my first gloves were the bricks when oh. I started cricket. Wow. Really? Yeah, that's right. I started with um, stopping the cork ball uh, at a tender age of uh, eight to ten years uh, when they formed a cricket team in our extension in Jai Mahal, where I used to live in Bangalore. So on those bases, uh, we had just one Donald Brad- Bradman bat mm-hmm. and three sticks as stumps and a stone at the bowling end. So being the youngest uh, in the in the in the in that team, you know, all the bigger guys throw their weight on the younger. Of fans. course, of course. So there was uh, nobody to. And the stop. tradition continues even now. There, there was nobody to stop the cork ball behind. So the captain of that team immediately said, "Hey, you go and stop that ball." I said, "How do I stop the ball? No wicket keeping gloves. I just stop the ball. That's it." So I looked left and right, and I saw um, um, a heap of bricks lying down. So, uh, most uneven ground, uh, and it wouldn't be called a ground at all in that in those days, right? So, I started stopping the cork ball with a brick. So, brick was my first glove. Unbelievable. Let's move on to his. Let's move on to his, his innings when he had taken seventeen catches, two stumpings against Pakistan, equal Nenan Tamne's uh, record at that time. Mm. Let's talk about that series against Pakistan, sir. Well, uh, you see, now I enjoyed all the challenges, uh, particularly when uh, keeping to Chandra. They were the ones who gave me Chandra and Press from the same state. May I please request something to you? Just before the show started, we you know we had lunch, and you you had a, a story that you shared with us. About Mr. Chandra, please go ahead and let our listeners also know yes, about that course. one inning that you held him for forty-five minutes. Oh well, <laughs> that that was the Lahore Test uh, when we were trying to save that Test match, uh, and uh, I always had the uh, Indian ha- Indians had the l- a very long tail in uh, in in those time when I had just started playing cricket, where um, uh, Bishan. Uh, Bedi, uh, Prasanna and Chandrasekhar were after me. Before me were all specialist batsmen and all-rounders. So on those bases, um, uh, I was there already and um, Chandra had come in last and uh, half an hour before lunch, I had to save uh, the match. So on those bases, um, every over I was uh, getting on to the other side at the fifth ball, uh, I used to take a single. And if there was uh, a good stroke where at that time there was Imran Khan and Sarfraz Nawaz and all these Mudassar mm-hmm. uh, Nazar, uh, all these were the uh, pace bowlers, Sikandar Bhak. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's right. They were the ones uh, who were um, the top order uh, bowlers for Pakistan. So on those bases, I told Chandra, Ke bhai, dekho, I will give you... Uh, you, I will shield you as much as possible. All you got to do is give me a good start uh, in running between the wickets. So on those bases, um, I was shielding him just one over before tea time. If we, if Chandra had only faced that one ball, which I had given him in that 45 minutes of uh, we sharing that partnership, and uh, that was the most unfortunate thing to have happened to Indian cricket and, and to the Indian team. And that one ball made all the difference uh, to our defeat and Chandra was bowled. Hmm. And that's where uh, we lost uh, the match. Uh, otherwise, uh, 15 minutes, half an hour we would have saved and we would have saved that match. If only Chandra had played hmm. that one ball, which... Uh, Unfortunately, and of course uh, we did. I was taking a bye also when in the last ball of the over when Imran uh, had uh, closed in everything, uh, you know, not to preventing me you know, in taking a single. So we, I went across to Chandra Mamula. He's got a ball, a bomb bouncer to you, and as soon as you see that ball pitch. Just run and I <laughs> come on there. So as the ball went over um, uh, Chandra's head, Chandra had already taken off. He ducked under the ball and ran <laughs> towards the other side. And that's how we completed and that's how I was shielding him every over actually. That was an unbelievable incident I remember. 
So, so let me ask uh, you know listeners and 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 cricket followers. We always used to wonder. We we know that uh, there are certain bowlers who tail enders who who can bat to save their lives. Mm. <laughs> People like Chandra. I know where he's getting at. <laughs> so right, I when, must tell you at this juncture in Australia when we were touring in 1978, that was uh, um, Chandra also was there. He was presented at Adelaide uh, with a beautiful bat um, with a hole in the middle <laughs> because <laughs> he never could face any ball, and if he had faced the ball, had gone through the bat. <laughs> <laughs> so so. So what is uh, really intriguing is, uh, wasn't there nets where uh, you would uh, kind of have Chandra and Prasanna uh, and all, all these uh, tailenders bat and, and you know try teach them skills to survive? Just just as I said, just one delivery and uh, you know. Uh, no, th- in those days, even now, if you ask me again, not many of the bowlers uh, would like to bat. They are not interested. In fact, it is the duty of the coach. Mm-hmm. We never had any coach in our time. I must tell you at this juncture that in our time of cricket and today's uh, era of cricketers and cricket, there is a drastic change uh, of our time and their time, the current time. We never had a coach. We we just had a manager and an assistant who would take care of the travel and the um, boarding and lodging, etc. and etc. Now you have eight support staff, and you have information and technology in uh, in our time. And I'm sure Amarnath uh, will vouch this, uh, who's um, he, who's an encyclopedia on uh, cricket stats. Uh, it used to be a radio or a transistor in our time. There was yes. no television in our time. So on those basis, uh, there's so many so much of changes which have come in. Uh, um, in this current era and it's always advantages and uh, more fun more um, frolics and more entertainment yeah you can analyze uh, opposition yeah. batsmen and bowlers and you know here's yeah. a did you know here's a did you know for you and for our listeners also did you know that in, uh, in the series uh, with England in 1981 and 82 Mr. Kirmani did not consider a single buy in the whole series in the whole series in the whole series <laughs> and about uh, more than 1000 runs were being scored Correct. Ni- 1964 runs were scored yes. to be precise oh. I'm, I'm almost uh, uh. certain uh, if i do the numbers Kirmani Saab will have the lowest percentage of buys uh, for the runs conceded this is, this is just the beginning now there are two more things i'm ge- heading towards now i think he had a knack for <laughs> for creating partnerships and records I'm reading something I've read. I've been reading about this thing for quite some time. I actually went back into uh, the, the, how Amanat does it. You know, look, open the scorecards, start reading about those matches. There are two matches that I brought. It's completely intriguing. One of them, I think this was uh, a record stand with, uh, uh, with uh, Mr. Gavaskar he had in Madras. And this is for the ninth wicket partnership. Against and the West believe, Indies? Uh, this was against West Indies in 1983. Yeah. And I think this is probably still one of the record that hasn't is, been... Is this the innings where uh, Mr. Gavaskar scored his double century? 236. 236. But, 236. but interestingly, he didn't open the innings. Correct. He was. He came... Isn't that the same innings where he was told that no matter what order you come in, the score is still zero? <laughs> I think yes. this was the same test he was yes. told. I, I must inform you, gentlemen, and those listeners, a very um, a very um, dangerous incident which took place okay. during that that match when I had the honor of sharing that partnership with Gavaskar, uh, who's the, the legendary um, batsman of our country. right? And that, um, he comes in the topmost bracket. Right, and uh, the West Indians were very furious. I don't know for what reasons. Later on, I'll come on to that reason. You know, when the partnership flourished, and I was uh, not out with 70 plus at that stage, uh, when Michael Holding bowled a beamer at me. Hmm. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. he and you, a beamer. you weren't wearing helmets back then? Uh, no helmet, uh, right? Uh, so I fell on the other side of my uh, stump, away from the crease, and I was wondering why he bowled a bomb, a, a beamer at me. You know, I said, uh, what's, what's going on? But they just were so nasty and never, they looked very furious. And later on, I came to know. And then I said, okay, if you want my wicket, I moved away, gave him all the three stumps uh, exposure. I said, here, yeah, take my wicket. Hmm. And believe me, the second beamer came on to me again, leaving the stumps. And there's something wrong somewhere down the line. And Michael Holding, such a mild character, you know, and um, he was such a good friend of mine. 
very soft spoken and uh, he was given the title as whispering death mm-hmm. all right the way he used to uh, he was an, a real athlete so nevertheless uh, they they were very crossed on a few umpiring decisions so ah. that's where uh, you know they took the spite on me they said yeah man uh, uh, sunny was out uh, on two occasions man the umpire didn't give him out so um, we had to take our uh, went out Out uh, on to you, man," he said. I said "Why me, man? Of <laughs> all the person, why me? What did I do?" <laughs> so nevertheless, so this was the incident. They were, the, the, I think, these were the only beamers in the whole uh, um, uh, cricketing history. Uh, which I think Amarnath would definitely jot it down uh, in mm. in the stats. Okay, no beamer was bowled to any batsman than Syed Kirman in that two two consecutive consecutive ones. Back to back beamers. If I'm if I'm right, the other uh, specialty of that century by Gavaskar was that was the 30th century uh, surpassing Donald Bradman's 29. Mm. He was the first batsman to do that. Yeah, yep. he, he hit his 29th in Delhi, and that was a, a very very aggressive innings by Gavaskar. Now Madras Delhi. happens to be your hometown. Yeah, that's yes, where you were born. born. Yeah, that's right. It must have been yes. great playing in front of your home crowd. You know, you you were born there. How was how was your experience? Back well, I've never felt that way that I'm playing in my hometown in Madras or um, in Bangalore. Uh, only whenever I went into the field, it, my only uh, intention was to do my best at all times and to uh, play for my team and play for the country and the, for the honor of the country. <laughs> Wonderful, gentlemen. Stay tuned now. We'll quickly do our segment this day in cricket. Okay, sir. So this is this is a segment we celebrate birthdays on today's day oh, okay. of all the cricketers. All right. We talk about the milestones that have that took place today, mm-hmm. and we also go over some of the obituaries oh, of this particular day. So here we go. This day in cricket, October thirteenth, nineteen eighty seven. October thirteenth, nineteen eighty-seven. World Cup uh, was going on in India. The West time. Indies scores four for three hundred and sixteen fifty overs against Sri Lanka. Absolutely correct, Amanda. Okay, I got that. You got that one right. <laughs> and then uh, let's go over to the birthdays now. Birthday. Born October thirteenth, nineteen thirty-eight. Nineteen thirty-eight. Mm. That means he would have played around sixties. A Pakistani Test umpire on international panel, Mehboob Shah. Mehboob Shah, I remember him very well. Uh, Mehboob Shah. Till ninety-six, ninety-seven, he umpired. Yes. <laughs> Born October thirteenth, nineteen forty-one. Nineteen forty-one. Twenty-five years. Uh, take, uh, six, uh, English quickie, unpopular with Aussies. Uh, uh, the, the John Snow. Absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> John Snow. <laughs> Oh, Absolutely wonderful. right. Wonderful. Born October thirteen, nineteen fifty six. Nineteen fifty six. Sri Lankan batsman in three tests and nineteen eighty two. Is it uh, Vetti Muni? Uh, Anura Ranasinghe. Ranasinghe. Okay, he was more of a spinner. Yeah. Correct. Well, yeah. I'm saying correct because I'm reading it. You're not reading uh, that. I know he's a spinner. He was. <laughs> Born October thirteen, nineteen seventy one. Kenyan left-handed batsman in nineteen ninety six World Cup. 1996 World Cup. Uh, Hitesh Modi. Hitesh Modi. His Hitesh father Modi. was uh, some SR Modi. Correct. Uh, he, uh, he was also an umpire. Uh, 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 Father-son um, umpiring combination. It was there for the first time. Born October 13, 1977. An English cricketer, Gareth Beatty. Gareth Beatty. He's an off-spinner. Yes. Off-spinner. Uh, he didn't make it much. Mm. We'll quickly move on to the obituaries. Passed away October 13, 1951. He's played seven Tests for England. Uh, he's made 220 runs. Uh, w. G. Billy uh, Coffey. Doesn't ring a bell. Sorry. Passed away October thirteenth, nineteen sixty-six. Nineteen sixty-six. He's only played one test for England. He's taken eleven wickets. His uh, father, uh, Father Marriott. No. Also passed away October thirteenth, nineteen eighty-five. Jack Wilson, Australian. Jack Wilson. Doesn't well, friends, that was our segment this day in cricket, and uh, this segment can also be found on our blog fulltosscricket dot com. Uh, we're also on uh, uh, Twitter with the tagline Full Toss Cricket. Our YouTube channel, uh, and thank us. you so much for our listeners for supporting us, giving us the support for so long. Uh, 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 you can log on to YouTube and just type in Full Toss Cricket Show. Well, friends, stay tuned. You are listening to Full Toss with Amit Amanath and Vijay, and we have a special guest in our studio today, Padma Shri, Mr. Syed Kirmani, one of the most flamboyant and legendary wicket keepers India has ever produced. We'll continue our chat with him. We'll request him to create that. Uh, nostalgic uh, era that moments, you know yes. moments that he has created. So I'm going to put him back on air in just a few minutes. Uh, we have our sponsors' messages that I really want to go ahead and play them. Don't go too far. We'll be right back after these short messages from our sponsors. 
happens you are listening to full toss this is your host amit on radio dil online radio dil.com for iphone downloads application known as radio dil you can also listen to us on your regular phones dial in the number 408 418 5000 for android phones application known as tune radio phone number in the studio 732 thoughts about the selection you know he's been a selector he's been the chairman of the selection committee uh, back in his days and uh, before before i take you back into your uh, playing days uh, here are a few more questions for you sir you go ahead amit Re- recently uh, there has been a change in the selection committee panel now yep. there was a talk earlier that uh, mr mr uh, uh, shrikant had done uh, such a wonderful job with the selection committee should mm-hmm. he be continue mm-hmm. should he be given that uh, uh, leverage mm-hmm. to continue in the selection uh, for the selection panel but uh, uh, bcci had different thoughts sandeep patil was uh, inducted inducted mm-hmm. along with him saba kareem also mm-hmm. vikram rathod yeah you have been so closely involved in the in the structure for so many years you have seen just about anything under the sun whether it's politics to talent to anything else <laughs> i want to know your thoughts about that sir well let me t- uh, first uh, tell you about the uh, uh, selection pattern it is uh, the cricketers and the team who perform and uh, who bring laurels it's not the selection committee um, the selectors and uh, selector selectors only select the uh, kind of uh, the fringe players in, in the reserves the rest of them select themselves hmm. by their own merit and their own performances hmm. okay the credit cannot go to the selection committee for sure now the coach i will put it straight on ke bhai it is the captain and the team who perform and 980 to 85% is the credit to the team whether they win or lose credit or discredit is just that the selection committee is a part of the team uh, who have uh, who have the prerogative in uh, announcing the uh, 15 or uh, 14 and the coach also plays its part um, just about um, maybe just about 20% uh, into the team's uh, discredit or the credit um, or the whatever it is so on those basis i think um, uh, from the point of uh, the new selection committee I think everybody has their tenure. Right the longest tenure was Shrikant uh, and now the selection committee is selected by the um, uh, management of the BCCI now earlier it used to be when i was um, nominated as the chairman selection committee it was a makeshift place when brijesh patel was the chairman Correct. from our and it was under rotation basis so now those uh, rotation bases have been amended right now and it and the um, the management has taken the charge so it is their prerogative to select the selection committee whoever they feel like and now sandeep patil has been the chairman roger binney has been uh, inducted as two players as the uh, from the representative Correct. from the south uh, and sabha karim and Um, Vikram Rathod uh, Rathod has been um, put into the um, uh, selection committee uh, as far as Mohinder Ramanath uh, we were all expecting him to be the chairman uh, after um, uh, Shrikant uh, but we don't know the inside uh, as to how um, uh, he was uh, it's funny you, it's funny you brought his name up in fact uh, Amanath and I we were on air that day that in fact the same day we were on air and uh, you know we had callers calling in and you know people wanted to start uh, they people were speculating on certain things and one of the things that we don't do on full toss is spe- uh, speculate and i told our listeners that uh, let's wait for the facts to come out uh, you know you're talking about somebody like mohinder ramanath i said you know those of us who grew up watching him those of who played a, with him he's a legend he's yeah. a legend yeah. Yeah. so let's wait on that thing yeah. i think we should yeah. wait on you know till and i think the, you know it's done it's done well there are so many things that uh, you know you wouldn't like to expose uh, to, uh, in into the public correct uh, you know there are certain personal matters now we uh, as cricketers and associations and the board are a family so um, uh, i don't think any member of the family would like to expose um, uh, the family 
uh, whatever all said and done is okay on those grounds there are certain personal matters which uh, cannot be disclosed and should not be um, made public also so this is my way of thinking and this is what is um, a family member is all about oh, mr agrawal let me uh, just go back to the selection process itself hmm. do you think that in today's world when there is ipl there is a lot of other cricket going on and all these youngsters upcoming cricketers get a chance to rub shoulders with the best of the international cricket players right yeah. not just in india sometimes the ipl matches happening in south africa so you get to see these cricketers uh against perform against the top quality cricketers not just indian players but uh, but for foreign yeah. players also okay. so do you believe that the selection committee now uh, has its job a little bit easier compared to those days when there was only first class cricket of india ranji trophy dilip trophy and then international yeah, for sure yes uh, you see this has given an opportunity to uh, see um, a lot of talent uh, you know and this concept of 20 overs where um, a youngster who has not even uh, represented the state uh, Um, properly you know just by uh, his uh, sheer um, exuberance uh, into uh, limited overs of cricket uh, has, uh, it gets um, uh, you know it's an opportunity for these youngsters to showcase their talent and uh, to share um, uh, the dressing room and the same bench with the international level cricketers it gives an opportunity for these youngsters to learn from these great legendary cricketers who play alongside so it's a fantastic uh, concept of uh, t20 which is in progress and i think all these three formats will go on test cricket of course uh, the art of cricket is seen only there and then you have this limited overs but let me also tell you that in uh, my time when i played 1983 world cup it was 60 overs not 50 overs correct so it has come to 50 overs and now it is 20 overs you never know you there could be 10 overs also mm. because there's so much of cricket being um, played and there's so much of fan following there's so much of uh, enthusiasm in everybody it has become a religion in our country in fact um, i think i must um, i'm very proudly say also that we laid 1983 world cup players who won the world cup for india laid the foundation uh, for the current era of cricketers to flourish absolutely correct i agree with you got atul uh, i would like to also add one or two more points to what uh, mr kirmani has said one is of course uh, yes it has given great opportunity for youngsters to come on 2020 and uh, plus it also brings them uh, a higher income level uh, of uh, uh, revenue uh, to the to the to the household uh, in the days when mr kirmani and earlier they were hardly any uh, benefits which they used to atul, get atul i must tell you at this juncture atul that in our time nobody encouraged us to play the game yeah, exactly so yeah. once you have a better salary so, coming in the parents wouldn't mind the children to go into a sport and make it a, a lifelong uh, career fair enough That's commercialization commercialization has come into the game no two ways about it and it's good right but in our number i'm just drawing a comparison between our time and the current era you see uh, we played for the honor of the country absolutely right i am not uh, trying to discredit the current era of cricketers they are also playing for the honor of the country but the first thought is ke okay, bhai uh, i will be getting this much of money when i represent the country or play ipl so there uh, the the parents of today's era they are putting in their children into the game by saying ke okay, bhai uh, when you play cricket you play ipl first because you will get this much money and you will be associated with bollywood and hollywood and all sorts of words right so that is <laughs> right <laughs> except the willow <laughs> <laughs> so on those bases you know that is the uh, culture that is the trend which is being um, you know followed by the parents and uh, they want their children if they have two sons one son will go into the studies who's not interested into studies and the other son will play cricket why cricket because you'll you'll be associated with shahrukh khan with salman khan and uh, all the khans blah blah and uh, the other one go into <laughs> the academy. <laughs> so this is what is the thing which is being followed by the current era of parents i guess with the way the world globally is moving from a commercial aspect i think cricket has also come to a crossroads of sorts as far as parents are concerned For and, sure. and i think you know uh, with uh, cricketers like yourself uh, who have taken a mission to to educate children uh, uh, and their parents i think we are on the right path as far as cricket is concerned in india radio del you live on air your name and where are you calling from radio del you live on air 
Radio Dil, you live on air. Okay, we lost. Well, give us a call again. Seven three two eight hundred one zero zero eight. Good, which I, I I can see your face. You have something yes, to say. Good. There, there are two things here. <laughs> when Mr. Kirmani was talking, oh, I, you are right. Absolutely right. The 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 lure of IPL is what draws a lot of cricketers today. On the flip side of it, and this is a comment even Rahul Dravid made. You know. Um, they short sell themselves you know in terms of not doing the best not being the best cricketer that they can be as you said test cricket is the real cricket they when they see that they can earn a lot more just by playing t20 and ipl specifically uh, do you tr- believe that a lot of these cricketers today just want to get to the ipl and and be done with yeah that's it i think uh, that's the way they are uh, aiming at unfortunately uh, this is where the coaches come into play this is where they have to guide the parents have to be uh, guiding their children as to money is not everything right i have seen a lot of youngsters uh, going haywire just hang on with us sir when the when, when the money has come into their hands you know now um, manish pande for instance you know from karnataka robin uttappa for instance they came up with a bang in ipl Hello? Right, and just now, hold on with us, sir. Just hold, just just uh, bear with us for one second. I know you're and, online with me. And now um, uh, they are finding it difficult to uh, stage a comeback. You don't see them in form at all because they have been lured into so many distractions with that the kind of money which they've got, and there's nobody to guide them. And would you say the same for Rohit Sharma? Radio Dil, you live on air. Your name and where are you calling from? Radio Dil, you live on air. Your name and where are you calling from? Radio Dil, you live on air. Sorry, sorry for the interruption, sir. You are like a Kamran Akman today. Dropping, I know. Tell me about everything it. Everything that comes. I know. Me. This <laughs> is you know. I can't even catch coal in Siberia today. That's how it is. <laughs> Uh, gentlemen, continuing on to the discussions, I know we have uh, we've been going back and forth uh, a lot about uh, selection, a lot about all these things. I want to take Mr. Kermani back into his playing days, mm-hmm. and I really want to take him. I know we've discussed few of the innings. Uh, Vijay brought up an innings. Uh, you know what? Last try. We're going to make sure that this time we see if we can get this caller. Nothing is working today. Looks like oh, yeah. that innings that he played in Bombay. Uh, uh, you know, he was batting with Ravi Shastri. Now, this one, uh, he holds a record for the seventh wicket partnership on this one. And we talked about the ninth wicket partnership. We've talked about other partnerships. Let's go back to this inning, sir. Uh, with Ravi Shastri against Correct. England, this Correct. was. Correct. Again, this was at the Bankhari Stadium when, um, in the regular order when uh, I went in. And uh, that's it. Uh, that's how uh, we built up a partnership. Uh, I mean, as I have mentioned earlier, that I've always tried to do my best and uh, put the best foot forward and make the best of the opportunity provided. Because in front of me, I was always um, uh, considered only a wicketkeeper. Though um, I started off in my school days uh, as a flamboyant uh, stroke player, uh, which uh, Amarnath would definitely vouch <laughs> on this uh, issue. Absolutely. He, he has watched me right from the school days and he brought back some nostalgic mem- memories of mine seeing me play right uh, I mean touring England in, in 1967 probably all those listeners who are listening to me were not born uh, <laughs> I was born that time no, most of the youngsters probably <laughs> no, no, I, I, I followed your career right from the tour of the England yeah, 1967 now, the right. most interesting segment now here comes okay. the World Cup all your right. innings with Mr. Kapil they have the match against Zimbabwe. Yeah, well, I think I should uh, start off um, as to where I started off from in uh, against Zimbabwe. On that particular day, unfortunately, the BBC were on strike. Correct. And, and we were the uh, two minos of the tournament, Zimbabwe and India playing. And there was no video. Mm-hmm. And yep. there was no camera, there was no video on that occasion and we were playing um, uh, in, in, in a county, uh, uh, I forget the name of the crown. Tunbridge Wells. Tunbridge Wells, that's right. Yeah, you go, it. Yeah, that's right. So on those bases, I, I was having a toast and I was in my towel trying to go into my shower before. You know, I, I thought I would never get back. Normally in these limited over games, I have never got batting at all because all the top order finish off. Uh, the 50 overs. So on those bases, I was uh, getting ready for my shower and I heard a scream, you know, hey, scream, bat up. Okay. Uh, somebody's trying to pull my leg. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. I, I relaxed. In a span of another few minutes, uh, less than a minute probably, another very serious uh, scream came up. Hey, what the hell are you doing? Bat up, man. Okay. 
I peeped with my toast in my mouth and holding the towel from falling down. I looked into the scoreboard and saw 17 for 5. Oh, gee. And by the time I could realize, I was walking inside. We were eight down. And Balvinder Singh Sandhu was the last man in after me. I was not too sure whether I had my abdominal guard or thigh pad along with me. I was just checking in when I was walking. It was <laughs> such a hurry. So on those basis, um, I walked across as usual. I was very, very confident about my uh, capabilities and my strength and my confidence level. Uh, poor couple at the uh, non-strikers and he was batting with 50 plus. He was the only fella. Uh, as a captain uh, with his uh, head bowed down and a cross leg and the resting uh, himself on the bat. I went across to him. I said, Caps, now it's time that you played your own game. Play your natural game. I told him in Hindi, the co Caps. Apna natural game khelo ab. Aray yaar, um, uh, kiri bhai, um, we have to play 60 overs. We have only played about 28 overs. Oh my God. I said, don't worry about it. We will play 60 overs. Don't worry. All I do is give you the maximum stand. And you go for it. You play your natural game now. You hit every ball now. I will take a single, put you on to the other side. So, thanks to Kiri Bhai, that, that the great innings of Kapil, he had uh, his... Uh, uh, well, uh, well, this is what uh, the confidence level and um, uh, you know, bringing about the confidence into one's self and this is what his experience all about. So, I went and I told Kapil, Ke Bhai, you don't worry, I'll give you the maximum stand to you and we will take this game through to 60 overs. We have to play 60 overs, he said. I said, I will play 60 overs and you don't worry about it. So, so believe me, I've never seen a blistering knock from Kapil Dev's bat until date. Wow. The yeah, way he I'm played. Sure 175 and we both of us remained not out and it was history afterwards. I think that was the key turning point for Absolutely. the Indian. Uh, That's the turning point. That's that the turning, point. turning yeah. point. That partnership put India to the road of victory. And I must tell you about the superstitious fellas who were in the team at that time. Every team has superstitious of guys course, like of hell. So this is all this all these superstitions and the incidents and the anecdotes came out after 25 years when we were taken back to the um, Lords. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Great celebration of the Silver Jubilee. I, I saw the pictures of, by the way, of, the day of that thing. So on those basis. Every one of us uh, came out with their own anecdotes as to what they were doing uh, when our partnership was building. Uh -huh. Man Singh, the manager, he was holding the team together. Everybody holding their hands on the bench. Srikant standing under the tree with his wife uh, and his shoulder, um, his hand on the wife's shoulder resting and smoking a <laughs> uh, cigarette after. He was a chain smoker. Yes. <laughs> and he was not allowed to go to the washroom. He showed to the manager, I believe, uh, he showed that little finger out. <laughs> I want to go. I am under tremendous pressure. I said, manager, shut up and stand like what you are. Don't change your position. <laughs> Continue, continue. <laughs> and it went on like that. And um, believe me, until uh, 60 overs, Everybody were glued to their places. Manager was holding each and every guy. Nobody will move. Nobody will wink. Nobody. If you want to go to the washroom, do it there only. <laughs> These were the instructions given by the manager. I Man feel bad Singh. for Mr. Shrikant for all that, all that, all those overs. Unbelievable. He's probably... Believe me, he expressed this in such a funny way, and he's a very funny guy. Very. Um, you know, <laughs> A funny character he is. He said, Kiri, I ran and uh, halfway through I was uh, halfway through while by the time I reached the washroom uh, to the toilet, he said. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so share with our listeners some of the uh, discussions with Kapil uh, when you went there. Well, there so many, so many anecdotes, so many incidences which took place. I must, uh, um, I must recall this also with Balvinder Singh Sandhu. Uh, again, the last wicket partnership on the final when I was there Balvinder Singh uh, came in and Malcolm Marshall was bowling mm. and we were um, we had a partnership of 30 plus runs Sandhu and myself on that uh, so critical absolutely absolutely so on those basis uh, the first ball Malcolm Marshall bowled a uh, tool to him was a bouncer and at that time we had helmets luckily mm. and it hit Balu on his helmet and Dickie Bird, the best umpire of our era, the world's best umpire, he literally abused Malcolm. Hmm. He said he used the full letter word on him. I was at the non-striker and how could you do that to a last batsman used? 
so and so, so and so. Oh, he just put his head down and then I saw Ballu rubbing his helmet, not the head. <laughs> I said, yeah, helmet to nikal na. Are you, huh? <laughs> he, removed, he removed his helmet and he started rubbing. Are you all right? Oh, okay, 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 don't worry. I will do my best. Uh, uh, you also play your natural game. Don't worry about you know giving me stand. If you get a ball, hit. Lagao, yaar. Don't be lagao. So Malcolm Marshall comes. Uh, while we were talking in between, he said, "Oh, I'm sorry, ma. You know, I didn't mean to hit you. You know." He said. In the sense of humor Ballu had at that stage was uh, unbelievable. He said, Hey Malcolm, you think ma, my brains were here? <laughs> no, man, it is not in my head, it is in my knees. <laughs> we had a good laugh at that stage and uh, right in the middle. So Ballu, uh, you know, was very humorous. Mr. Kirmani, now yeah. here's, here's a cherry on the top. That this is the only clip that you know of World Cup win, and Atul has also always seen it. Mm. Mohinder Ramanath bowling from the other end. Yep. There are only three people, including uh, sorry, four people in that clip, in that in that frame. Mm-hmm. Amanath, Mohinder Ramanath, mm. umpire, mm-hmm. the batsman, and you. Okay. Tell us the tell our listeners. Tell us that one delivery that was turning point for Indian cricket, absolutely. And you were part of that. You were uh, right there and uh, there. Yeah, for sure. That was not the only turning point. Uh, you see, yeah, every wicket, point. yes, every wicket was a turning point to all of us. And the, the the best turning point was the Zimbabwe match. Yes. You see, if we had not won that, we wouldn't have qualified into the semis. At but all. that particular moment, that particular moment, uh, you know, we didn't believe that we were the world champions. You know, when that uh, ball got low and got Michael holding a leg before. You just completely jumped. And we rushed. I uh, didn't have any time to think of picking up a stump as a memorabilia or a bale or a ball or whatever. I charged, the whole team charged, whatever anybody could grab on the way. The ball hit the um, pads of Michael Holding, rolled towards uh, slip where Sonny was standing. Sonny picked up that ball, (laughs) put it in his back pocket, ran. We bamboozed into the dressing room. The whole large cricket ground was filled with all our fans fan followers uh, and uh, the entire Indian crowd was it was the ground was not seen at all it was chock a block and that was the moment uh, where every one of us charged we didn't have the time to go on a a lap winning lap onto the Lord's uh, cricket ground uh, that was an unbelievable um, history, historical Thank event. you very much, Mr. Kirman. Go ahead, Atul. There was actually one more funny incident on that day uh, when Balvinder Singh Sandhu got gotten Greenwich out. Um, uh, and this was told by Mr. Sandhu to me. He said, I, when I bowled that ball and he shouldered arms and, you know, this wicket fell, um, Kiri came running to me and says, a very good uh, in-cutter, uh, beautiful ball, you know. And Sandhu actually said, yeah, I thought trying an in-cutter. I was trying an out-cutter. <laughs> I don't know whether that's true. No, but no, no, that's no, I, I was going to come out on that incident as well. Well, everybody went and congratulated Ballu on that first Gordon Greenwich. Uh, when I said, hey, Ballu, yaar, kya in swinger dala, yaar, tu ne? Aray, nahi, Kiri bhai, wo in swinger nahi, main out swinger dala, wo in, in, in swinger ho gaya. Uh, Kiri bhai, magar ye kisi ko bolo maat thi. <laughs> <laughs> so listeners enjoy this uh, incident of course yeah, probably, uh, there, are, there are so many things <laughs> there are so many things which you don't intend to but it happens so this is the aerodynamics uh, which uh, make all the difference Mr. Kirmani we have been chatting for last one hour before that at the at the place that we had lunch yep. we discussed your career we discussed the ups and downs we discussed about the politics we discussed about your glorious days something else happened within your career and I think this is very few people get to experience and get to have this title in front of them, Padma Shri. Well, I was, what was the feeling when you got it? Uh, well, I was uh, very elated and very surprised um, uh, at this um, uh, award uh, which has been conferred upon me by the uh, government of India Correct. and the president of the country. It was a huge honor given to me and a very special day um, when I inquired about what is Padma Shri is all about. 
they they inform that we look into a character uh, on all round basis Absolutely. whether he is going to be an ambassador of the country whether he carries himself like an ambassador of a country and on those lines from the sports from the academics from the point of how he presents himself and uh, how he can uh, carry the name of our country and we look into each and every aspect and that's how we select uh, and elect uh, a padam shri or a padam bhushan or whatever the awards conferred by the government of india fantastic gentlemen mr kirmani had a fantastic one hour unfortunately that's all the time uh, we had for today for this particular show i still cannot believe i'm sitting across one of the the greatest <laughs> legendary wicket keepers india has ever pr- produced yeah, thank you so much padam shri mr said kirmani Also, Amanath and Vijay, absolutely incredible time. And I expected that from you on Jon Snow. You delivered that for me. Vijay, I expected all the things you delivered for me. Atul Hoku, as always, thank you so much uh, for, for bringing in Mr. Kirmani here. I really appreciate that. Go ahead. You're most welcome. I Cricket think- is, uh, is, is part of uh, our DNA. So whatever we can do to get our DNA uh, up and going and running... it's a pleasure i think uh, it's thanks to Aku, uh, atul uh, haku for getting me out here and uh, meeting all our uh, cricket lovers uh, in edison and new jersey in particular so thank you so much uh, listeners for paying uh, for listening uh, giving a patient uh, um uh, hearing uh, to uh, whatever my comments were i hope you enjoyed it and uh, more as and when uh, an opportunity arises with this uh, have a great weekend uh, to all those listeners and god bless to all and just a quick reminder for our listeners uh, amanath and vijay that uh, in over today's broadcast uh, uh, amanath is going to go ahead and uh, upload that on, on on our youtube channel just type in the word full toss cricket show and you can listen to this entire show in its in its entirety without any editing without anything else the full show is going to be there and but tomorrow morning uh, i'll have it up and i think this is this is this is this particular show is going down in the memory lane this is something i'm going to share historical, historical moment for uh, full toss well it has been a pleasure talking to all of you gentlemen and meeting all of you and sharing my little experiences uh, from the mighty ocean which i was in Well, friends, thank you so much for tuning into Radio Dil, and I know uh, most of you were trying to get to us through us on this on this particular channel. So uh, I know uh, with some technical difficulties, we were not able to put you on air, but uh, definitely log on to f- our YouTube channel, Full Toss Cricket Show. I uh, want to thank all our listeners for giving us the support for so long, gentlemen. Thank you so much for your contribution, your expertise, your knowledge you bring to this table. It makes it absolutely much more interesting. We'll be back here uh, same time next week. Good to three till then everybody have a fantastic week